This year marks the 19th running of the Rolex Kentucky CCI 4 Star, where horses and riders will be competing for $350,000 in prize money. Rolex Kentucky CCI 4 Star is a selection trial for this summer's Olympic Games in Rio. The Flower Box number one, the Step Table number two, and the Open Oxer number three are all large inviting obstacles that will get them out of the first field and on their way to the first combination at the Market Moguls number 4 ABC. The first jump of the combination takes them over a large produce stand then related distance to the log drop before jumping out over the ash tree. Control and accuracy will be needed to get through this successfully. This is the first time the competitors will encounter a large crowd, which may be a bit of an eye-opener for some of the horses that have not been in this sort of atmosphere. They will then have a long gallop into the infield where they will jump the new Keeper's Brush number 5 and then around the turn to the Creekside Cabin which sits on top of the mound, 6A, the keeper's brush is always big and this year is no different and thus requires bold riding. After the keeper's brush, the creekside cabin will come up very quickly and will need a bold ride with a controlled horse on the landing to negotiate the goose 6B, which is in the water at the bottom of the slope. As they gallop off, it won't be too long before they come to the frog pond number 7AB. This is slightly different this year and requires a positive ride and a brave horse as they jump in over the log with the drop into the water, followed by nothing but forward riding to get out over the treasure chest at the top of the slope. As they gallop out of the infield to the cedar oxer number eight and then down to the ditch brush number nine, both of these jumps are very large in stature and need to be respected. However, most will show how amazing these horses really are. There will be a long gallop before coming to the roll table number 10, which will lead them to the Rolex head of the lake, 11 ABC and 12 AB. While the approach to the head of the lake is the same as last year, they will need a horse with scope to jump the roll table and then to be able to land with a horse that is underneath them to then take on the hanging brush jumping into the water. While there are a number of strides between the jump into the lake and the brush corner in the middle of the lake, it will come up fast. It is not over yet as they will still have to land from the brush corner and prepare for the jump up the bank and bounce out over the brush. Riders will need to maintain concentration through this series with a horse that is paying attention and under control. There is a longer option here, however most will go the straight way and only opt for the alternatives if they encounter a problem along the way. As they gallop out of this area, they will need to jump the picnic table number 13 before galloping on to the curving brushes on the mounds at 14 AB. As they head up the hill to the brush at the top of the first mound, the riders will need a willing horse on a rounder active stride. Jumping in over the first brush, they certainly want to make sure they have their line and that the horse is not on too big a stride, as the second one will come up fast and they could run out of distance. There is little room for error here, and it would be easy to get an unwanted run by. Just after fence 14 AB, the riders will come up on minute five of the course. The hollow this year is a little more than halfway, which means there is still plenty of jumping left to do. There is then a long gallop up past the polo field, which will bring them to the pine rails number 15, and then on to the hollow 16 ABC. The cedar roll into the hollow will need to have that active controlled canner with a positive ride in and then down the steep slope, which will bring them to the sod top cabin at the floor of the hollow. As they come up the slope out of the hollow, they will need to know their line as they will have a choice between two narrow chevron brushes. There is always an option 
for these chevron brushes, which would take some time but could prove to be safer. Traveling down the lane, they will come to the double brushes number 17, which are bold galloping jumps, and the riders will have a choice between the two. Moving on to the fallen dueling tree, which is just after minute number seven. One might think it is a let up fence, however this jump is quite important in the lead up to the Land Rover landing number 19 AB. As they land off the fallen dueling tree, they will need to immediately start their preparation for the jump into the water, which will be followed just a few strides later by an open corner. While the horses are well into the course by now, the jump into the water should not pose a problem, but they still need to land with control to keep their line to the corner. If they have a bobble on the landing into the water, there's the alternative corner that could get them out of trouble. As they move away from the Land Rover landing, they will get back into their gallop to approach the footbridge number 20 which is a big galloping fence where the riders will need to hold the line. Moving up the hill, they will make their way across Mark's Lane and then on to the Normandy Bank and Horse Park Barns 21A BC. This year they will jump up the bank and then just a few strides later at the base of the slope they will have the offset Horse Park Barns. The approach to the Normandy Bank is off the right side this year, which should not make a huge difference, however they will still need the power jumping up the bank, and then right away be on the turn to get their line to the barns. At this point in the course, many that are going well will start thinking of that clear round, but they should not get complacent as there is still quite a bit to do, and they will need concentration to keep from getting that unwanted run out. The tobacco stripping bench is a large fence and needs an accurate ride before coming to the fox's den number 23. The riders will need to pay attention to the approach to the fox's den as it comes through the hedges and will affect the line that they take to the corner. This jump needs patience as it would be easy to have a glance off. At this point in the course, the horses are on a pretty open stride and the balance is not the same as when you started, which will factor into the thought process when preparing for the jumps on this section. Galloping back down the track, they will come to the park question 24 ABC, which has traditionally been earlier in the course. The approach to this type of obstacle is always an important factor, but once over the log, the line must be maintained to jump the ditch and then out over the double brush. While most should go straight through, there is an alternative route that will take time. Cruising back up the hill, they will jump the stick pile number 25 before heading to the water park at 26 A and B. They will enter the water park over the half pipe at the top of the mound before going down into the water and then out over the duck. While it seems straightforward, it still needs to be ridden to continue on without faults. As they leave the water park at 26 AB, they will come up on the 10 minute mark for the course. The Waddle and Dog Cottage will come up next before heading down the lane towards the last three fences. As they approach the hillside cabins and corners number 28AB, they will have to decide which line they would like to take. This is just a matter of preference as each rider will have a favored side. That being done, they will head to the produce stand number 29 and then on to the finish.